This episode of SciShow Kids is made in partnership with our friends at Soil Cycle. Oh, I see. And it's not doing so well, huh? Aw, oh, Squeaks, I'm sorry. Oh, hi there, everyone. Squeaks was just asking for my help with the gardening problem. He wanted to be able to see his favorite flower from his favorite picnic spot, so he moved it from the fort's garden to a new place. But now it's not looking so hot. Let's figure this out. Are you still giving it the same amount of water every day? And did you check to make sure it's getting the same amount of sun and fertilizer? Hmm. Then I bet it has to do with the dirt in the new spot. Oh, yeah, the dirt itself can definitely make a difference. While we might think that all dirt is the same, it's not. Oh, you're right, Squeaks. I should say not all soil is the same, since that's what it's called by pedologists, the scientists that study the stuff we plant things in. And those scientists have found that soils can have different properties or traits that make them different from one another. Like, soils can be different colors. But I have a feeling the property we need to look at to solve this mystery is how the soil feels, what those scientists would call its texture. Soil is mostly made up of little tiny rocks. Its texture depends on the size of those rocks. And soil texture can have a big effect on whether or not plants get what they need to be healthy. Soil that feels rough or gritty feels that way because it's made up of bigger rocks than smoother soil. Gritty soil is great for plants that like dry habitats because water passes right through it. Soil that feels smooth feels that way because it's made up of much smaller rocks than gritty soil. Smooth soil is great for thirsty plants that like wet habitats because water takes a lot longer to pass through it. Let's go collect some soil from each spot. Then we can rub some of each of them between our fingers and see if they feel any different. Okay, Squeaks, let's see. Hmm, the new soil doesn't feel grittier, but it doesn't feel smoother either. I don't think I can tell if the texture is different just by touching it, Squeaks. But don't worry, I have an idea. A podologist friend of mine taught me a neat trick a while back that helps you see the texture of soil. What do you say, Squeaks? If you wanna try this activity at home, all you'll need are two clear containers with lids, some soil from different areas, some water, and of course, an okay from a grown up. Here, we have two cups of soil. One is from the fort's garden, and the other is from Squeaks' favorite picnic spot. Right, we made sure that we got about the same amount of soil from each spot. We've put each cup of soil into a clear container. We've already labeled the containers so we know which is which. Now we'll add about the same amount of water to each container and put on the lid. And it's time to shake things up. Okay, it's time to put these in a place where they won't be disturbed and wait. We need to give our mud shakes time to settle, at least a few hours, though a day would be better. So let's go, Squeaks. We'll check back tomorrow. <gasps> All right, Squeaks, are you ready to take a careful look at our containers? <laughs> oh, cool. Look at the layers. I count one, two, three. Let's check them out. What do you see? This top layer? You're right. It does look a lot like the clay we use to make pots and sculptures. And that's because it is clay. Those are the smallest bits of rock and soil. So small, we'd need a microscope to see them. Because they are so small, they fit really close together. So if your soil is made of mostly clay, water will have a hard time going through it. And because they are so small, they'll take a long time to sink, which is why clay is at the very top. Right again, Squeaks. This middle layer has slightly larger bits of rock in it, even though you still can't see the actual rocks. 
It's called silt. Tiny pieces of silt can't snuggle up as close to one another as bits of clay can, so water can squeeze between them pretty easily. But they're still small enough that silt feels soft when it's dry. Kind of like the flour you might have in your kitchen. You can see the rocks in the bottom, can't you? That's because they're grains of sand. Sand grains are the biggest and heaviest part of the soil, which is why they sink to the bottom. And sand is, well, sand, like you'd find at the beach. And we know that sand feels gritty and rough when we touch it. There's lots of room for air between grains of sand, which is good, because plants need that air. But water also rushes right through those spaces, so sandy soil doesn't hold on to water very well. Now, do we see any differences between these two soils? I agree, Squeaks. The soil in the new spot looks like it has a lot more sand than the soil in the garden. And yep, that means water runs faster through it. So. Bingo! I bet that your flower isn't happy there because the soil's sandy texture means it's not getting enough water. Of course, Squeaks. I'd be happy to help you move it back to the garden. And speaking of the garden, all of our soil episodes this month are brought to you by our friends at Soil Cycle. They're a nonprofit organization in Missoula, Montana, and they take food scraps from their neighborhood and turn it into great soil for people to use with their plants. We recently took a field trip to Soil Cycle to learn more about how they do it. And if you want to watch that, you can head over to the SciShow Kids YouTube page. And if you want to learn even more about soil, you can hit the subscribe button. For now, we'll see you next time at the Forge.